is one of the simplest meals you can cook and the secret to it is preparation. It is important to get the correct joint so would you tell us what this piece of beef is? Well today I'm cooking a rib of beef, rib eye of beef. That's the colour it should be, it shouldn't be bright red after it's a well hung piece of beef with a nice marbling of fat through and a layer of Put fat it in, in the roasting dish ready to go in the oven. With our roast beef today, I'm going to serve roast potatoes, mashed potatoes, which are already prepared, some broccoli, carrots, and of course, delicious Yorkshire puddings. So the vegetables are all prepared, thanks to my handy kitchen assistant, uh, Bill Steak, who's been in earlier today to prepare them. And I'm just going to start making the batter. I'm going to get the tin ready to make the Yorkshire puddings. I don't use lard. I know a lot of people prefer lard for these, but I prefer the, the white vegetable fat. I won't mention any brand names, but you can buy it in any supermarket. And about that much, can you see how much I put in? Probably about a half a teaspoonful in each patty tin, like that. And then just before we cook, that will go into the oven to get really hot. My Yorkshire pudding batter doesn't actually follow any one particular recipe. I think I've picked the best bits from all the best chefs. And I think Gary Rhodes was one of the major influences from changing me from water in the batter to milk. To make enough batter for a, a dozen good Yorkshire puddings, I use two eggs. Best you can buy, whichever you prefer. These are free range barn eggs, I believe. A little touch of salt, not a lot. Tiny sprinkle. And four tablespoonfuls of plain flour. I, I'm afraid I haven't got the metric weights. I've been making them for so long, I just generally measure by the spoon. So I've measured the flour into the eggs and now I'm going to beat those as far as I can to mix the, the e uh, eggs and salt into the flour. I'm making a bit of a mess, that's why I've got the pinny on. You don't use an electric mixer then? No, it's quicker with a fork, it's only a little bit. As soon as it really starts to go together like that, you need a bit of elbow grease, and of course you can use an electric mixer if you want. Start to thin that down with milk. And again, choice of milk is yours. Semi-skimmed, skimmed, full fat, whatever you choose. And add that a little bit at a time so it doesn't go lumpy and that you don't cover the kitchen in batter. You need to have just about enough milk, and again, sorry no measurements, but probably up, up to about half a pint until your batter is the consistency of, of double cream, unwhipped double cream. And then we'll leave that to stand until the beef is nearly ready. So we've parboiled the roast potatoes and popped them into hot fat. They're just starting to cook nicely, so I'm just going to turn them round a bit so they brown evenly. So the beef's been cooking nicely now for about an hour and a quarter. The roast potatoes parboiled and in cooking nicely and the fat heating for the Yorkshire puddings. So it's time to put the vegetables on. Boiling water onto the potatoes and the carrots. And once those get going, we'll put the broccoli on to steam. Right, so everything's cooking nicely. The vegetables are on the boil, so I'm about to put the Yorkshire puddings in. The fat's been heated in the oven. And how long would you say that's got to be in the oven, Leslie, before you uh, put the mix in? A, a good ten minutes to make sure it's nice and hot. And then we pour the fat into the individual tins. You can hear the sizzle, that's exactly what we're looking for. that tells us the fat is nice and hot. So that's our Yorkshire's ready to go in. So I've turned the oven up a bit now from the six that we've been cooking the beef on to between seven and eight to make sure it's nice and red hot to cook these Yorkies. How long will those take, Leslie? They'll take about 20 minutes. So by the time they're cooked, the roast potatoes will be finished off, the vegetables will be cooked, and I shall just have time to make the gravy before we serve. So it's all just about ready now. I've just put the water on from the potatoes to heat up ready to make the gravy and I'm about to take the beef out of the oven to rest and we'll have a quick look at the Yorkshire puddings to see how they're doing. 
for the beef is looking beautiful, I think. That looks really good, Leslie. Perfectly cooked, I think. I'll pop that over here. We'll have a quick look at the Yorkshire to make sure they're okay. And that looks like, to me, a nice tray of Yorkshire puddings. Excellent. So while the meat's resting, I've drained off most of the fat from the dish that the beef was cooked in. And now I'm just letting that brown a bit over the gas. I want it browning nicely. We'll add the potato stock to it. Very gently at first because it will spit like that. And we loosen all those lovely meat juices from the bottom. Would you do that in a sauce, or has it got to be a dish like that? Well, that's the dish the meat is cooked in, so that's got all the goodness from the beef stuck to the bottom and the sides. That's where we'll get our flavour of our gravy from. So we've added some thickening to the, to the gravy and a bit of gravy browning, and I'm just going to add our wonderful little stock cube just to add a bit more colour and richness to the gravy. Well, it's smelling delightful. Pity we haven't got smelly vision then. A nice quick stir and I think we'll probably just pop in a bit of red wine just to finish it off. Any particular kind, Leslie? Anything at all. And just remember if you're going to put cheap wine in it, you're going to get cheap gravy. And we're just about ready to serve. Any reason, Leslie, why you got the beef out and left it for quite a while? We only leave it for a few minutes to let the juices that are coming out as it's cooking resettle into the meat and leave a nice tender joint to eat. Ready? So the first cut is coming off. The first slice is just about to come off. There we are. Well, it looks absolutely excellent. As we go to the middle of the joint, it won't be as well cooked as these outer slices, but at least doing it this way, it caters for all tastes, whether you like your beef well done, as it is on the edges, or nice and rare, as you can see is happening in the middle. So we like our beef rare like that. That isn't to everybody's taste, but if you don't want it as rare as that, just turn the oven down for about that last 20 minutes or half an hour, and that will cook it thoroughly right through to the middle, as it is on the outside edges. We've strained the potatoes and put them back in the saucepan, be piping hot, adding a knob of butter and my personal likeness is for just a blob of creme fraiche. I can get the container open. Before could you use cream eating. as well? You could use cream or you could just use ordinary milk. What so about a raw egg? Some people do put egg in it or buttermilk or yoghurt, up to individual choice. with a traditional roast beef dinner. Roast beef and Yorkshire pudding, carrots and broccoli, mash and roast, and gravy. Cheers, happy eating and happy cooking. So next time we're going to have a look at cooking Mediterranean fish. Thanks for joining us.